Hi there, I'm Craig Taylor and once again many many thanks for joining me on my YouTube channel The Bushcraft Padawan. I'm here today on the edge of the South Downs which is a, a stretch of landscape that covers a, a portion of the south coast of England in the United Kingdom and I'm out today practicing a little bit of personal navigation. In truth what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to re-educate myself from using mills to navigate which is a unit of measurement to using degrees to navigate having spent 16 years in the military being taught how to use mills teaching other people how to use mills and using mills myself for practical navigation it's really really difficult to try and unlearn that and apply it to degrees and that's what I'm out today doing but I digress Whilst I've been doing that today, I have taken a look at my map, as I've done many, many times during the course of this navigation that I've been doing over the past few hours. And something dawned on me. When I took this map out, and as I've been using it, I've realised that there are some things that I do to my map to tweak it, to modify it, to enhance it, to pimp it, whatever you want to call it. There are some things that I do to that map that are not perhaps typical. People may not have thought about them. And I thought, you know what, I'm gonna to put together a, sh a quick video just to show people the things that I do to most of my maps when I receive them and when I use them, just in case they happen to be useful to other people. So here's a little rundown on what I do to pimp my maps. So the first thing that I do, I start even before I leave home. There's something that I do to my map to prepare it for when I get outdoors, to make it more valuable to me, to make it easier for me to use, to make it quicker for me to navigate and to make judgments. So why don't we rewind the clock, take a step back to before I left the house and have a look at what it was that I did to my map to enhance it even further, to pimp my map. So to pimp your map, you're gonna need the map that you're gonna be working with, you'll need two different and contrasting highlighter pens. You'll need a pencil. And if like me, your mathematics is awful, you're probably gonna need a very simple calculator as well. That's what you need to get started. You should then unfold the map and lay it on a nice flat surface. Then take one of your highlighters Starting in whatever corner of the map you want, start to highlight in the, the Eastings that are running along the bottom of the map. And I'm simply going to go along and I'm going to highlight each of these until I reach the very end of the map. Once I've reached the other side of the map, I'm then going to repeat that exact process for every other easting that I can see numbered on the map. Remember to use the same colour highlighter for the eastings. At the end of that, what you should now have are all of the eastings on the map highlighted in the same highlighter colour. Along the bottom, along the centre, and along the top. Depending on the scale of your map, you may have more rows of eastings to highlight than I have. Your next step will be to take the different colour highlighter that you've selected and this time identify the northings on the map or the eastings if you started with the northings and go along and very carefully highlight each of those. And continue doing that until all of those numbers on the map have been highlighted from left to right, from top to bottom. Remember to keep your Eastings a different colour than your northings. What you'll now have across your entire map are the Eastings and the northings highlighted in a different colour. That allows you to very, very, very quickly see where those numbers are to enable you to apply grid references for that, to allow you to take grid references very, very quickly, minimizing the time it takes for you to navigate 
and also minimizing any risks that there might be in you missing an easting or a northing somewhere. Very, very quick to do, hugely advantageous once you step outside. The other thing that I will do is I will identify the magnetic variation information that is usually contained in the marginal information on your map. And here it is under North Points. I'll then do some simple or complex mathematics, depending on what your mathematics skill is. And what I'm trying to work out is what is the magnetic variation for this year? This is giving it for the year of 2011. We're now in 2017. So I need to do some maths to work it out for what it is this year. I'm going to write in here 2017 because that's the current year and it's currently west two degrees. And I just marked that on the map down here in pencil. That allows me then to not have to do any mathematics when I'm outdoors, when I'm cold, when I'm wet, when I'm hungry, when I'm under pressure. I've done the hard work in advance. I also write it in pencil so that if I come to use this map next year or the year after, I can scrub that information out, I can rub it out, and I can recalculate what it will be to make sure that my navigation is always gonna be as accurate as possible. Now, as you saw from that video, those changes that I made to the map, the way that I pimped it, the way that I enhanced it, it affected the entire map. I made marks on the map, I highlighted things on the map that affected all of the map from bottom left to top right and everything else in between. And that's very, very useful, but it's not often enough. Sometimes there are occasions, like today, where I folded my map down to a specific area that I want to use, and those enhancements that I've made previously may or may not be visible. They may or may not be of use to me. So let's take another rewind, let's turn the clock back again and look at another change that I make before I leave the house, if I know the area that I'm gonna be operating in. Now here we've got a map that's been folded down to the specific area that I've been working in today. We can see that the Eastings highlighted in yellow are visible, brilliant. But what we can't see because of the way that the map's folded is what the Northings are. So what I do to remedy this is I just unfold the map until I can see the Northings. Here they are along the right hand edge of the map highlighted in orange. And what I'll do is I will just rewrite that figure in the fold of the map that I'm going to use. So this is 0, 0. So I'm going to write that across there in pencil. 0, 1. 0, 2. 0, 3. And 0, 4. And I've just written them across here in pencil. So this time when I fold the map up, not only do I have the Eastings visible, I also have the Northings that I've transposed across. And then I can take my orange highlighter and I can mark that 0001, 02, 03 and 04. So what I've done with just a few extra seconds work is I've transposed the accurate Northing information onto the area of the map that I folded down I've highlighted it to make sure that I don't have to unfold my map in the cold, in the wet, in the rain, risk losing the map, risk damaging the map. I've made the map useful to me in the area that I'm gonna be working in. A final change that I can make is I can write down here, magvar, mag variation. Remember it was two degrees west in 2017. So once again, I don't have to unfold the map to look at the marginal information if I need to know what the magnetic variation is. I've written it in pencil in the area that I'm working in. So there we have it then. Those are the changes that I make to most of my maps before I leave the house on a very large scale affecting the entire map. And if I know the area that I'm gonna be operating in, also on a much smaller scale as well. I do it because it makes my life easier when I get outside. I do it because it should make my navigation quicker. And I do it because I'm a human being and sometimes I make mistakes just like the rest of us. Marking your map up in this way before you leave the house, when you're warm, dry, 
well fed, well nourished, not under pressure, can be can make a critical difference once you get outside and all of those factors come into play. Well, I hope you found the video useful. If you have, please let me know in the comments below. If there's anything that you do to your mapping that I've not mentioned, maybe something that I've missed, again, mention that in the comments below and let's all uh, help one another become better navigators. If you've enjoyed this video, as always, please do like it, share it, and click on the all important subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos from me. Thanks for watching.